Chewbacca's bowcaster is a formidable weapon, capable of unleashing intense kinetic energy on its victims. Now we know it can knock back a target with significant force, but if we really get into the physics involved, the effects of a bowcaster might look a little less like this, and a little more like this. It would appear that the bowcaster is a pretty powerful weapon, possible only through the means of unknown exotic technology. However, we can analyze just how powerful it really is. The Force Awakens gives us a shot that is almost perfect for calculating every conceivable aspect of a bowcaster impact. Not only is this shot almost perfectly perpendicular to the action, but it takes place on a portion of the set that is incredibly easy to measure, as blueprints for this set have officially been posted. Using these, we can almost precisely measure the distance from the trooper to the back wall, or door, but basically the back wall, where his motion is suddenly cut short. This distance is 4.35 meters. And from the moment the trooper is hit, we can calculate the time he takes to get to the back wall to an accuracy of 1 24th of a second, because that's the frame rate of this movie. The time is 0.58 seconds, which means that he is traveling an average of approximately 7.5 meters per second. That's actually not that fast. That's basically like a pretty good speed on a bike. Though imagine hitting a solid wall while riding your bike at a good solid speed. But what's a a little more important here is the acceleration that the trooper endures. So here we have our speed and 1 24th of a second, which gives us an acceleration of 180 meters per second squared. But what sort of force could accelerate a fully grown man with body armor so quickly? Now, assuming that a fully grown adult male with body armor comes in around 93.27 kilograms, we're looking at an impact of around 16,788.6 newtons, or 3,770 pounds of force which is more or less like a car crash at something around 15 kilometers per hour, or 9 miles per hour. Now that sounds slow, but it's no joke if you're a pedestrian. That's easily some major, though probably not fatal, injuries. But getting hit by a car at these speeds would look more like this... and less like... You know, granted, the more realistic knockback is shown in the movie on some occasions. But for this shot, there's obviously a disconnect here, and that comes from the fact that the trooper flying backward is clearly a stunt, probably achieved through wire work and not actually behaving according to the laws of physics. He doesn't have a real acceleration curve, and he doesn't fly in an arc. Instead, he moves in what seems to be a straight line at a constant speed. So obviously, there's something wrong. Either the trooper is moving too slowly, or he's flying too far. No matter how far he is propelled backward, he will always hit the ground in the same amount of time. Their horizontal speed doesn't change the force of gravity exerted upon them. So if his path of flight appears to be a flat line to our eyes, that means that the arc of him approaching the ground will be insanely long. But he needs to travel along that arc in the same amount of time he would take to travel in a smaller arc. So if his flight path appears flat, as it does in the film, that means he needs to travel backwards really, really fast in order for the physics to work. So let's have some fun. Let's assume that the trajectory is correct, but the time that he's in the air has been lengthened for effect. Like this is a slow-mo shot and we just don't realize it. Now, I'm going to assume that there is some loss of altitude here because there has to be. So let's say something like half an inch or 1.27 centimeters. Given that it takes 0.0509 seconds to fall 1.27 centimeters, that means his horizontal speed would have to be 85.47 meters per second. That's like 200 miles per hour which means that the bowcaster bolt in the 1 24th of a second that is in contact with the trooper would need to impart 200,500 newtons. That's 47,000 pounds of force. That's like getting shot by a tank. 
So Chewie's bowcaster isn't really a rifle, it's a handheld howitzer. If Chewie had access to this kind of firepower, it makes you wonder why he'd bother commandeering an ATST in the Battle of Endor. The bowcaster itself is almost definitely enough to cause this sort of damage. Though it's possible that this sort of power comes from modifications between the two films. Now, of course, if you really got hit by artillery-grade weaponry, you wouldn't fly backwards so much as disintegrate. But of course, the real explanation might simply be that the physics really don't matter and the shot is more impressionistic, communicating the power of the blast without being too particular about the literal physical reality behind it. But it's fun to explore nonetheless, and I hope you all had fun coming on this physics journey with me. I would like to give a big shout out to my friend Andy, who did basically all of the calculations for this video, and he was a huge help in communicating these ideas to me so that I could communicate them to you. Now, one thing I'd like to mention is that this platform can be a little touchy considering videos about these sorts of topics. Yes, even if they're about fictional worlds. And I'd say that there's a pretty good chance that this video might be demonetized or somehow ranked lower in recommendations and search results. So if you guys like this content and you wanna help support me in making more content like this and keeping the quality high, it would mean the world to me if you supported me on Patreon. Seriously, it makes a huge difference. But honestly, just sharing this video with your friends would be awesome too. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.